This is one of my take home messages. We need government funded anti engine to democratize translation industry because we are, I mean, I mean, the largest translation company in Turkey is making maybe $10 million a year. Probably less. Average translation company in Turkey is worth less than $100,000 a year. $100,000. So if a translation office is making $100,000 a year, they can, can they invest in an empty engine? With my numbers, no. I mean, numbers may differ, but with my numbers, no, they can't. And that is, I believe, why the European Union is very keen on supporting academia and developers, funding them to make this happen. Because otherwise, it's the four big companies. I mean, Google, Yahoo, I mean, Amazon, Facebook. They will, they will take it over, and we will all just work for them. I mean, they are good, okay, but... I'm not against big companies, but why not have a more democratic society? Like, can you beg me your name? Another John. Okay, John is going. <laughs> you know, John here, if he wants to start his business, like maybe he is very keen in technology, he wants to develop, you know, he wants to capture the time. Yeah, now is the opportunity. And then, but there is a barrier, financial barrier. How can John? A smart, nice Turkish guy, maybe with, with his classmates and with the guidance of one of his professors. Okay, we know it, we have all the experts, but can we mobilize our resources financially? I don't think so, unless your father is very rich, which is, pro which is probably in this university. But, <laughs> but no, historically, I mean, his, you know, historically, uh, Eastern nations, you know, take pride in building. You know. I used to be a tour guide, you know, in you know, Istanbul. I mean, travel across the Middle East. All you will see is buildings, beautiful, fantastic palaces. But can you name, you know, a machine factory from 18th century? Maybe a textile factory. And the machines are imported from where? Italy. Or an optics company. Do we have an Our oldest companies are Turkish delight companies. <laughs> and it, I mean, it, it's, we know how to make Turkish delight. Okay. We are good in that. We used to be an agricultural society, but now it is time to take it over to a next level. But we need government's intervention, otherwise, we cannot do it. Okay. As promised, what should translation companies do? I promised to talk about this. I gave you all, you know, non-curricle matters. According to uh, a panel discussion we had two years ago in beautiful Porto, there were several MT providers and the discussion was, what is the break-even point? You know, you keep investing in MT and when does it pay back? or if it pays back. The consensus was around this. Well, maybe with neural MT, things are changing. I don't know, but uh, previous speakers already illustrated that there is more cognitive effort involved, I mean. Previously, anyone tried uh, SMT before, post-edit? Becky Bay, several. In SMT, you know, the mistakes, right? I mean, the verb is out of place. Or the sentence ends awkwardly. So you just know where to fix. Go and fix it. In NMT, you don't know where the, where the problem is. The sentence looks very nice. But it's not correct. In SMT, you know, in a, in a well-trained SMT, the words were there, phrases were there, but some words were missing. Okay, so this is the break-even point. 500,000 words. This is one project. I mean, it should be one project, one company, one domain. For example, construction. Or, for example, medical licenses, medical products. They have sizable data. Or car companies. They have a lot of data, you know, lots of books, manuals, blah, blah. But I mean, 
technically, can you can you make an engine for Orhan Pamuk novels? I believe you can. I believe you can make an engine for a novel, but you just don't have enough data, and I don't think it is worth investing. I mean, so I mean, in my opinion, based on my you know, primitive understanding of science, I mean, scientists can develop an engine for literature as well. They can do it. Technically, it's possible, but the, do, do they have enough data? And I mean, if they, if you invest hundred thousand dollars just for a book, and the translator is translating the same book for two thousand dollars, it's a waste of money. But if you are Limebridge, you are making two hundred and fifty million dollars out of translation, and just twenty percent, maybe ten percent, increases ten million dollars for them. That is why they have, some companies are so enthusiastic because they are big. They have the economies of scale, and companies like us, we watch them, you know, and, and salivating. <laughs> but okay, so so with, with these numbers, what I suggest to other translation companies is uh, that there is one thing you can just bit higher, you know, you can go for the higher end clients, like big companies, car companies. Instead of doing your notary public translation, you know, a proxy letter or passport, which is easy, you know. Anybody did passport translation? I'm sure you did. How many seconds did it take for you to complete a passport, to translate? Maybe 30 seconds, maybe one minute, and your translation is done. And if you had an engine, it could also work. But it's just two pages passport. So the idea is, why not enter into larger businesses? And why only think in Turkish? We heard from professors, the technology is language agnostic. You don't have to speak Spanish, you just need Spanish data. And the Spanish business. So why not go after it? And they pay in euros. If you make 100,000 euros, it is worth 600,000 Turkish lira. If half of the money is your profit, you can buy a small apartment with one job. So think about it. Why limit yourself with Turkish? In my company, Turkish is becoming the second or third most common language is becoming there. We are going there and we want to go there. Because Turkish economy is what? 1% of the global economy? Why do we have to stay in Turkish? We don't. We can go further. So there's one suggestion is you can go to other languages. The other suggestion is you can go after large companies who have large content. Like a hotel chain, because developing an engine for a hotel chain is easier, and there are very nice off-the-shelf engines already trained for hospitality industry. Do you understand off-the-shelf engine? I mean, re almost ready to use. It is trained for that. But is it trained for Turkish? I don't think so. Maybe hotels.com, I think they have it, and they are using Amazon as well. But it is not rocket science to train an engine. I mean, we did that, and in two of our projects, we were very successful. In five others, we weren't. But we did. I mean, experimenting doesn't hurt. If you have the pocket for it, you can experiment. So I have it, and so I, I spend the money. All right, so my last suggestion could be for the translation company or a translator, Go work for large companies like Lionbridge, Transperfect. Become their outsourcer. You work for them. It's your decision. Or go talk if you have some, you know, close people in Turkish government. Go talk to them and get some funding. And maybe you go to the, uh, you know, Spanish universities with Ara University. You know, Kazakhstan. You know, they did that. So why not Turkey? If Turkish government pays several million euros, it is just two Mercedes less. Two million dollars is two Mercedes less, so 
I think we can afford it. Second business case. How much time do I have? Almost done. How, how, how many minutes do I have? I get. Okay, I'll, I'll finish. Five minutes. Okay. Chatbot business case. Uh, the cost is around one thousand dollars. It may cost less if you do it yourself, and you can do it. I assure you, you can build your own chatbot. Not a rocket science. Usage fee, there's a fee, $10 per month goes up. Maintenance, you need to update your bot. And the chatbot, for example, you have a chatbot for what? Hotel check-in. 